Sphota, Devanagari Sphota, the Sanskrit for bursting, opening, spurt, is an important concept in the Indian grammatical tradition of Vyakarana, relating to the problem of speech production, how the mind orders linguistic units into coherent discourse and meaning. The theory of Sphota is associated with Bhatrari c. 5th century, an early figure in Indic linguistic theory, mentioned in the 670s by Chinese traveller Yi Jing. Bhatrari is the author of the Vakyapadiya treatise on words and sentences. The work is divided into three books: the Brahma Kanda or Agama Samakya, aggregation of traditions; the Vakya Kanda and the Pada Kanda or Prakernika, miscellaneous. He theorized the act of speech as being made up of three stages: conceptualization by the speaker, pasyanti, idea. Performance of speaking, madhyama, medium. Comprehension by the interpreter, vaikari, complete utterance. Bhatrari is of the Sabda Advaita, speech monistic, school which identifies language and cognition. According to George Cardona, Vakyapadiya is considered to be the major Indian work of its time on grammar, semantics, and philosophy. Origin of the term While the Svota theory proper originates with Bhatrari, the term has a longer history of use in the technical vocabulary of Sanskrit grammarians, and Bhatrari may have been building on the ideas of his predecessors, whose works are partly lost. Sanskrit Svota is etymologically derived from the root Svot to burst. It is used in its technical linguistic sense by Patanjali, 2nd century BCE, in reference to the bursting forth of meaning or idea on the mind as language is uttered. Patanjali's svota is the invariant quality of speech. The acoustic element dh vani can be long or short, loud or soft, but the svota remains unaffected by individual speaker differences. Thus, a single phoneme vana, such as k, p, or a, is an abstraction, distinct from variants produced in actual enunciation. Eternal qualities in language are already postulated by Yaska, in his Nirukta, where reference is made to another ancient grammarian, Audambarayana, about whose work nothing is known, but who has been suggested as the original source of the concept. The grammarian Vyadi, author of the lost text Samgraha, may have developed some ideas in Svota theory, in particular, some distinctions relevant to Dh Vani are referred to by Bhatrari. There is no use of Svota as a technical term prior to Patanjali, but Panini refers to a grammarian named Svatiana as one of his predecessors. This has induced Panini's medieval commentators such as Haridatta to ascribe the first development of the Svotavada to Svatiana. Vakyapadiya The account of the Chinese traveler Yi Jing places a firm terminus anti-Quem of AD 670 on Bhatrari. Scholarly opinion had formerly tended to place him in the 6th or 7th century, current consensus places him in the 5th century. By some traditional accounts, he is the same as the poet Bhatrari who wrote the Satakatraya. In the Vakyapadiya, the term Svota takes on a finer nuance, but there is some dissension among scholars as to what Bhatrari intended to say. Svota retains its invariant attribute, but sometimes its indivisibility is emphasized and at other times it is said to operate at several levels. In verse I.93, Bhatrari states that the Svota is the universal or linguistic type—sentence type or word type, as opposed to their tokens sounds. .Bhatrari develops this doctrine in a metaphysical setting, where he views Svota as the language capability of man, revealing his consciousness. Indeed, the ultimate reality is also expressible in language, the Sabda Brahman, or eternal verbum. Early Indologists such as A. B. Keith felt that Bhatrari's Svota was a mystical notion, owing to the metaphysical underpinning of Bhatrari's text, Vakyapadiya, where it is discussed. Also, the notion of flash or insight, or revelation, 
Central to the concept also lent itself to this viewpoint. However, the modern view is that it is perhaps a more psychological distinction. Bhartrari expands on the notion of Svota in Patanjali, and discusses three levels Varnasvota, at the syllable level. George Cardona feels that this remains an abstraction of sound, a further refinement on Patanjali for the concept of phoneme now it stands for units of sound. Partisphota, at the word level, and Vakyasphota, at the sentence level, he makes a distinction between sphota, which is whole and indivisible, and nada, the sound, which is sequenced and therefore divisible. The sphota is the causal root, the intention, behind an utterance, in which sense is similar to the notion of lemma in most psycholinguistic theories of speech production. However, sphota arises also in the listener, which is different from the lemma position. Uttering the nada induces the same mental state or sphota in the listener, it comes as a whole, in a flash of recognition or intuition pratava, shining forth. This is particularly true for vacuous photo, where the entire sentence is thought of by the speaker, and grasped by the listener as a whole. Bimal K. Matalal has tried to unify these views, he feels that for Bhartrari the very process of thinking involves vibrations, so that thought has some sound-like properties. Thought operates by sabdanoya speaking, so that the mechanisms of thought are the same as that of language. Indeed, Bhartrari seems to be saying that thought is not possible without language. This leads to a somewhat Horfian position on the relationship between language and thought. The sphota then is the carrier of this thought, as a primordial vibration. Sometimes the nada sphota distinction is posited in terms of the signifier signified mapping, but this is a misconception. In traditional Sanskrit linguistic discourse, e.g., in Katyayana, Vakaka refers to the signifier, and vasiya the signified. The vasiya relation is eternal for Katyayana and the Mimamsakas, but is conventional among the Nyaya. However, in Bhartrari, this duality is given up in favor of a more holistic view. For him, there is no independent meaning or signified, the meaning is inherent in the word or the sphota itself. Reception Vyakarana <reception> 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 Sphota theory remained widely influential in Indian philosophy of language and was the focus of much debate over several centuries. It was adopted by most scholars of Vyakarana grammar, but both the Mimamsa and Nyaya schools rejected it, primarily on the grounds of compositionality. Adherents of the Sphota doctrine were holistic or non-compositional suggesting that many larger units of language are understood as a whole, whereas the Mimamsakas in particular proposed compositionality According to the former, word meanings, if any, are arrived at after analyzing the sentences in which they occur. This debate had many of the features animating present-day debates in language over semantic holism, for example. The Mimamsakas felt that the sound units or the letters alone make up the word. The sound units are uttered in sequence, but each leaves behind an impression, and the meaning is grasped only when the last unit is uttered. The position was most ably stated by Kumarila Bhatta 7th century, who argued that the svotas at the word and sentence level are after all composed of the smaller units, and cannot be different from their combination. However, in the end it is cognized as a whole, and this leads to the misperception of the sphota as a single indivisible unit. Each sound unit in the utterance is an eternal, and the actual sounds differ owing to differences in manifestation. The Nyaya view is enunciated among others by Jayanta 9th century, who argues against the Mimamsa position by saying that the sound units as uttered are different, e.g. for the sound G, we infer its G -hood based on its similarity to other such sounds, and not because of any underlying eternal. Also, the vakaka vasiya linkage is viewed as arbitrary and conventional, and not eternal. However, he agrees with Kumarila in terms of the compositionality of an utterance. Throughout the second millennium, a number of treatises discussed the Svota doctrine. Particularly notable is Nagasavada's Svotavada 18th century. 
Najesa clearly defines Svota as a carrier of meaning, and identifies eight levels, some of which are divisible. Modern linguistics In modern times, scholars of Bhatrari have included Ferdinand de Saussure, who did his doctoral work on the genitive in Sanskrit, and lectured on Sanskrit and Indo-European languages at the Paris and at the University of Geneva for nearly three decades. It is thought that he might have been influenced by some ideas of Bhatrari, particularly the Svota debate. In particular, his description of the sign, as composed of the signifier and the signified, where these entities are not separable, the whole mapping from sound to denotation constitutes the sign, seems to have some colorings of Svota in it. Many other prominent European scholars around 1900, including linguists such as Leonard Bloomfield and Roman Jacobson may have been influenced by Bartrari. Editions of the Vakyapadiya Wilhelm Rao, Bartraris Vakyapadiya, die Mullakarikas nach den Handschriften HRSG, und MIT einem Pada Index Versen, Wiesbaden, Steiner, 1977, Abhandlungen für die Kunde des Morgenlands 42, 4. Wilhelm Rao, Bartraris Vakyapadiya 2, Text der Palmblatt Handschrift Trivandrum SN. 532 equals a Stuttgart Steiner 1991 Abhandlungen der Geistes und Sozialwissenschaftlichen Klasse Akademie der Wissenschaften und der Literatur Nier 7 ISBN 3 515 4 Saroja Bhatte, Word Index to the Vakyapadiya of Bada Hari, together with the complete text of the Vakyapadiya Delhi Eastern Book Linkers 1992 ISBN 8185133514 Open Library See also Nyaya Sabda Vak